committee including Bahrain Health and Safety Supreme Council, the Gulf Occupational and Environmental Medicine Group, Bahrain Occupational Health Association, Head of Occupational Health Subcommittee, Ministry of Labor, and a member of the Safety Legal Subcommittee. She is also a member of Mother and Children Welfare Society. She is also a founding member of Committee of Children Wishes Committee. I think this much is enough because uh, let's hear uh, over to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Krishnan. Distinguished and honorable guests, team, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm starting, I'm greeting you from Bahrain. Good afternoon and welcome to this prestigious event which focuses on issues that are closer to our hearts and minds and greatly contribute to the enhancement, betterment of health, safety and well-being. I'm greatly honored to have been invited to this event and given the opportunity to be in this beautiful country. So share with you, to share with you my humble experience with regards to the importance of occupational health and its integration with safety. Actually, the amount of expertise available at this country is phenomenal and speaks highly of those individuals who took it upon themselves to ensure that health and safety is advocated at all levels and given the importance it deserves. I can say from the bottom of my heart that they managed to do so well to organize such big event and I was amazed with the enthusiasm and passion and wealth of knowledge that exists in this country and with the determination to wanting to make change and huge improvement in all areas in particular and in health free work environment so that everyone goes back to their loved ones unharmed and healthy every day. However, as we all know, Let's go to the first slide just to... However, as we all know, introducing changes and creating an injury-free work environment takes a lot of time, energy, resources, patience, and endurance. It took our ascenters and decades to show the importance of safety to the survival and sustainability of businesses and organizations. Subject matters experts were faced with great difficulties and they were purified by senior management and accused of their lack of loyalty to the organizations because they were biased to employees' rights and did not really care about the company, profitability uh, and image. They did not give up. They continued to work tirelessly and with determination with regulators, the unions and companies to establish comprehensive and robust safety systems that eventually saw the light and was adopted and implemented by companies until it became an integral part of their management system and the way they conduct their businesses. I'm talking about the story of Bahrain and how they bring the safety and health as integral part to the companies. Looking at some of these emerging health and safety risks, senior management soon saw the emerging risk and the advantage of such system and the manner they contributed to productivity, profitability, business continuity, employees morale and reputations to the extent where they became passionate about it later on. They have also understood that their survival was dependent on having a strong safety culture which is advocated throughout the whole fiber of the organization. What became more evident to them from the result of the major incident investigations that occurred around the world, sorry, that occurred around the world, sorry, I should not have these now, it's okay. It's okay. 
I'll manage again to go to the first slide. Yeah, here we go again. So, look at this figure, ladies and gentlemen. 12.6 million people died due to exposure to an unhealthy environment in 2012. One of the most important things that we'll understand and when equipment is damaged, when an equipment is damaged, it can be repaired or replaced. And when a plant are destroyed due incident, they can be rebuilt or refurbished. Unfortunately, this is not the case with humans. The majority of our parts cannot be replaced, and particularly the occupational diseases. They take such a long time to occur. Some of the diseases, they have a latent period up to 15 to 20 years to occur. So at that, and by that time, they are irreversible. For example, occupational hearing loss. Cannot, you cannot bring back his normal hearing to the worker after he loses it. Having asbestos, having carcinogenic carcinoma, having lots of the occupational diseases, they are preventable. But once they are there, it's very, very, very difficult. Even it's impossible to, again, having the worker healthy back to his home after he loses his arms in an accident, loses his hearing, loses his health. Another figure, one figure, one in ten children under the age of five died of respiratory diseases caused by air pollution. This is other disheartening part. Young people, according to the UNICEF, outdoor and indoor pollution are directly linked to the pneumonia and other respiratory diseases that account for almost one death in ten children under the age of five, or nearly 600,000 children, making air pollution a leading danger to children's health. Let me repeat myself, we cannot allow this to happen too much. It's not easy and it's very challenging, especially if we want to integrate interrelated activities and functions and have them aligned and given the same level of importance. <clears throat> One of those struggles that health and safety professionals have faced in recent years is the integration of health and marketing it as a strong of a culture as that of safety. People can easily relate hazards and risk to safety. Most of the people, they link, oh, we are having chemical hazards. The chemical hazard, we might get some burn, some, um, some, but none of them, or very, 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 very rarely that they will correlate the hazard to the direct health effect, to the direct diseases. People can easily relate hazards and risk to safety, but they have difficulties in relating occupational health issues to the same hazards. What we all ultimately want to achieve is having the same sense of vulnerability and awareness amongst our employees about both health, towards both health and safety issues. What we want to do is to speak about health and safety and focus on the majority of our efforts and time on safety and give little attention to health, including the uh, resources allocation. Occupational health gets, gets unfortunately diluted and loses focus and traction and end up being a side issue instead of being an integral part of our internal process and culture. Why do we think that occupation health, occupational health is important? It is important. Here are some of the points that I just wanted to share with you today. For example, the high cost of occupational and preventable illnesses. Most of the workers are insured. If we are not going to talk about their health as a human being and having the full right to go back after work healthy to their beloved ones, at least to take about numbers and economically, we are talking about a list of diseases. The ILO, they have a long list of the occupational disease. Most of the countries, they have the same list and these diseases 
they should be compensated for, these workers, they should be compensated for developing such diseasing while practicing uh, their work. The impact of the productivity and bottom line, the higher absenteeism and employees' morale, cost of health care for the affected uh, workers and the other part of the list. Einstein once said, out of clutter we find simplicity, from discord we find harmony, in the middle of difficulty we find opportunities. This is exactly the kind of opportunities we must explore to bring alignment and harmony between health and safety. We must utilize the experiences we gain with maturing safety systems that are available now and use it as a strength to help bring out the safe and healthy work environment. We must create a structure in which health and safety is managed effectively and uniformly and that both are given the same level of importance. Our, stakehold, our stakeholders need to see the health as an integral part of our strategies and business plans. One of the James uh, reasons for safety paradoxes is that safety is defined and measured more by its absence rather than its presence. What does that mean? The same thing applies really to health. We seem to measure it by the number of deaths and illnesses and not by what we have in place to prevent the occurrence of such undesired events. Most of key performance indicators, the KPIs, focus on lagging the indicators and rarely address the leading indicators that help us proactively deal with the issues before something goes wrong. Don't get me wrong, lagging indicators are important, but unfortunately our performance is measured after something has gone wrong rather than helping us highlight issues that might cause something to go wrong. Despite the maturity of our safety system, we still concentrate our effort in generating data that gauges our performance after the event. We strongly believe that health and safety workplace yield measurable benefits because evidence continues to show that the health and well-being of employees is directly tied to the business value of the companies they work for. Evaluating and measuring health and safety will make it possible to have adequate data that will enable us understand the health risk associated with organization activities and help make preventive and proactive programs available so that human life protected from exposure to occupational diseases and incidents. However, things are easier said than done. Changes, change is difficult to be implemented because it requires commitment from the leadership of the organization and an understanding of its importance from middle management in addition to the employee's understanding of its implication. When we first introduce any change to any community, we have the knowledge and correlation with acceptance and with acceptance what we are going to see. First of all, we might face some opposition from some people. They don't know much about this new change that you need or we need to introduce it to them. After that, some of the people will skip some of the uh, uh, practice until the more they get to know about it, so the more they build up their knowledge, they start to support the change you've introduced until some of the people will be really enthusiastic about it. So how do we adopt and make change? It can only start with creating a company culture and within it you have management system and with it come management commitment and leadership. This can only be achieved through the following. You must have a comprehensive and resilient procedures, strong teamwork and individual ownership, an integrated and well-defined system engagement of all stakeholders and other factors, of course. Today I would like to share with you some of the occupational health challenges that me, myself, I have faced throughout my career. And every time I 
have to add one more challenge throughout uh, while I'm working. Many challenges actually facing the occupational health. For example, the deficient work inspection system. We don't have, in most of the small and medium enterprises, you don't have the sufficient number of inspectors you should have. Workers' health is not priority in the establishment agenda. Not all the, as we said before, it's a commitment from the uh, management and it's, it's not the case all the time. Increased demand on occupational health professionals I will talk about the, uh, uh, the Arabian Gulf area, I will talk about Bahrain, and even today, from the numbers that I have heard since morning, that the number of the occupational health practitioners, even here in India, does not really meet the requirements or the actual need for them in, in, in India, and it's the case actually everywhere. Absence of epidemiological surveillances on the level of workers' health. This needs a continuous surveillance to be conducted to the workers to find really what are the hazards they are exposed to. You have to detect, you have to have an early detection of any possibility of any occupational disease before it really reaches a late uh, stages, which you can't do much about it. In many definitions you can find in reference boxes or guidelines, they are clearly state the importance of including all aspects and all components to build up an appropriate occupational health program. I've listed some of them in the slides uh, which is showing now, but I'm sure there are many other components. Any health practitioner, any occupational health practitioner can add more according to so many uh, uh, factors. The, the, the maturity of the system they are working with, the uh, availability of the budget they need to work, and many other uh, uh, issues. Is it important to integrate health and safety? Yes. Me, myself, I believe it's really important to have the health and safety system integrated with each other. And this is really uh, uh, happens uh, through the planning phase that starting with the planning, how to integrate the health and safety. We have to have an evaluation phase and gap assessment of the current health and safety system in the organization. And it's extremely important so that we build up on a strength and augment process which are weak and close any gaps uh, in the future. Also, the whole strategy needs a senior management support and commitment in order to have this integration happening between health and safety and to ensure the health and safety of all the workers working for the uh, organization. Here, the, uh, this slide, I just wanted to share with you the OSO's uh, 18,000 and to see the occupational health and safety management system and how they are really uh, interrelated and integrated in order to uh, uh, have the OSO's 18,000. At the end, I would like to share with you what benefits do we really expect from this integration. This integration will make us focus and having exactly with the health and safety team, proper team, we shall be able to identify the possible hazards, assess the relative risk in a scientific way, inventory a legal, legal requ requirements that needed to ad be adopted within uh, the company, identify the control measures needed in order to overcome uh, these hazards and to protect our workers, define the appropriate system to do that, set objectives to minimizing the, the hazards, establish health and safety management system, integrate health and safety hazards into business process, identify and assess and control hazards relating to businesses, and anticipate and meet health and safety performance expectations. To have all this to be done, experiences shows that major benefits can be attained from aligning health and process through an over strategy. When we look at this, this is the first piece 
of the JETSCO that I wanted to introduce in this slide. And ladies and gentlemen, I look at health and safety actually integration as a jigsaw with its bits and pieces scattered all over the places. The jigsaw can only be completed if you get to know the final uh, picture. And the final picture here is going to look like and how we wear the different bits and pieces fit with each other which goes first which comes later and which can really complete the whole picture in order to establish a proper health and safety system and program within our society, within our companies, in our countries, on the national level, on any level. I think it's, it, it applies to all. We have to have the right strategies. We have to have the commitments from the leadership. We have to have the professionals that are working on that. Thank you so much for uh, listening to me. I'm sure that you, all of you are tired. Thank you so much for having me in this prestigious event. Thank you so much.